appreciate it. Congratulations on this. Thank and, you. And uh, thanks, you know, because at least I had my box of Kleenex with me. Uh -huh. So I do appreciate the good cathartic cry. Oh, great. Well, I'm <laughs> glad you enjoyed the film. I did. Um, I have to ask you, Nicholas Sparks, what, where does it come from, from this man? Like, he just has the market cornered on these wonderful romances. Yeah, I think it's really great because um, they don't really make a lot of romance films that much in Hollywood anymore. Mm -hmm. These are very rare. Um, to make films, you got to like certain specific genres. They got to be very successful. And he's the one individual who continued to make these films, that continue to make money, and they continue to have audience love. And and he has a really, each year, I think I think he got two books coming out next year. He constantly writing, and I think that's very important as an artist and as a filmmaker, when you have such a, a book like The Longest Ride that has so much layers, so many great characters and two different stories and great themes, it really make it very interesting as a filmmaker to visually get these things across. Yeah, and then you never know as a director, too, if your leading actors are going to have chemistry. But I have to say, I mean, you know, Brit and Scott, pretty, pretty good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Does it make you nervous when you put two, you know, people who are don't know each other together and you're like, is this going to work? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing in real life. Sometimes you see friends who are in relationships and you wonder they shouldn't be together. Um, so that's one of the key important things with a romance film like this is like, who are the two individuals that you want to root for in this film? Um, immediately, Britt Robinson was the first person that was cast in the film. So we brought in all these different actors and Scott you know, Eastwood came in, and I didn't know what that chemistry was going to be like, but it was clicked on. It was right right there from the beginning. You can tell that there was something very interesting. They were completely two different individuals. They grew up in two different parts of the you know United States, one on in the South and one here on the, the West Coast, and they never really met before, and to put them in the room, there was immediate chemistry that you want these two people to be together, and that's what's important for stories like this. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they totally work. And yeah. then, my goodness, pinch yourself moment to have Alan Alda? For me, yeah. that storyline, I could yeah. not, every time I watched that storyline, I could not stop crying. I mean, fantastic. Yeah, he's, uh, I was so excited that he was available because he's so busy doing plays, Broadway plays, or movies and television, and he directs sometimes as well. So when I found out he was available, we were just, myself in the studio was very excited. Um, the great thing about him is that he's, you know, he's a director too, so my vocabulary and as far as directing is very quick with him. He knows exactly what we need to get across, and we needed a leader t as well, and he was that guy who really just really brought what we need as far as the oak for this particular story. Yeah. You're, of course, a graduate from uh, Columbia College in, in Chicago. Why was it important for you to go to school there, and how did it shape your career? You know, what was great was, you know, was, I'm, you know, being in Chicago is like, at Columbia College, right away to give you a camera. First year, most film schools, you gotta wait two, three years to tell a story. Columbia give you a camera in the first semester, maybe in the first four weeks. Great thing about it is you got the art, you got the theater department, you got the music department all on the same campus. So you're meeting actors, you're meeting musicians, you're figuring out who's the people you want to be able to work with. So immediately you became a really functional filmmaker very early on. And plus you got the city of Chicago right there in your hometown, right there, right next to you. So you can go to you can go to, to a particular class one day and then they'll be shooting like a, you know, child's play around the corner, you know, or De Niro will be shooting a film that's in town for like three, four weeks. So you were seeing productions all the time. It was a very exciting time, and it really made you feel like a filmmaker, even though you're aspiring to be a filmmaker. You felt like you were in the right direction. Okay, and lastly, what films make you cry? Um, I think films that are emotional, you know, films that um, are truth and honest. Um, and for me, I know my parents will, will probably be crazy if I say this, but when I brought home Taxi Driver and I showed Taxi Driver to them, my, my dad was like, don't ever bring a film home like this. But I cried <laughs> when I saw that film. Or I look at Cooley High, Michael Schultz, Chicago director, um, um, who shot that movie in Chicago. Um, very emotional film about characters that you love and you just grow and you root for. And that's the kind of films that I love to make. Well, you've done good on this one. Really great job. Uh -huh. And I can't wait to see what you do next. Congratulations on this. And Appreciate lovely it. having a chance to talk All to right, you. Thank, thank you. you.